All right, so let's see how we can get a CFA done in R. Maybe we should go back through a couple of the simple steps. Probably the first thing we want to do is we want to set up a new project just to remind us how that all works. So under file, new project, and then we want to create a new project in a new directory. So we click on new directory on a new project and then we have to first of all decide where do we want to save that. So in my case for example I already have it uh, linked to my desktop that's where I want to actually save it right now otherwise I would click on browse and I have to give my new project a new name. Co. What name should we use? Maybe CFA exercise because we're going to learn how to use and how to run a CFI in R. So click on create project and it's going to do the magic and drum rolls hooray we have a new project fantastic the important thing now right now is though we need to get our data set into our files uh, folder here so what we need to do is we need to download the data and then we need to transfer the data into the folder where our project is. So I was already doing a little bit of preparation so I was playing around with the data a little bit and the data that we are going to use I called it data example and now I'm going to drop it copy desktop see if I exercise I'm going to drop it into my folder and if we go back to our studio voila it is there that is awesome so we now need to open a new R script so file new file R script this is where we're going to manipulate all the commands which then will be run by R. So good practice always, you know, like annotate what you're doing. So we obviously, first of all, want to read the data in. So read my data in. Let's see, like, first data. That's what we call our little object. And now we want to read n the CSV file which is here so we need to put it in um, quotation marks it is called data underscore example dot CSV and then what do we need to do what do we need to do exactly we need to specify that our data has headers so equals true and what else can you remember exactly we need to specify missing missing variables uh, missing NA strings. I typically use a combination, so for example, empty spaces and some version like 999. Cool. This is what happens here. And now let's see names. First data. Oh, there we go. We have a mysterious variable X, and then we have country. And then we have one, two, four, five, six, seven helping variables and five voice uh, items. So let's find out what this variable X is. So if we go, for example, summary, and we go names, and so we could ask for a summary of all the variables, or we could just go, for example, first um, da -da -da, summary um course have to say first data Jesus that's not starting well is it and then I want to have just a summary of that mysterious variable here what we can see now is it is the participant number very cool we don't actually need it so we could get rid of that so if we want to create a new object a new data file so we could for example call data example and we now want to state 
where we get the that new or what we want to do um, so we could say first data and square brackets that always kind of gives us some kind of uh, options for manipulating what is in first data so C and then we could get rid of it by just saying minus one so we drop the first column right so if we do this and then we go again names data example now hooray we got rid of that first column so maybe just to annotate that getting rid of participant numbers in the first column great so now we want to get started with CFI do you guys remember whenever we want to do something in R what do we need to do first any vague recollections of it exactly we want to or we need to load our packages the packages that we will need today are Levan and we also need something called SAM tools I hope you guys remember how to install packages if not go back to your notes so we have the two packages loaded and now we want to set up our CFI analysis so the first thing we have to tell Levan as the kind of main package that we're going to use right now we need to tell Levan what is our model what is the model that we want to use and that we want to test against our data so that was one of your little tasks that I asked you to do creating the model the way we do this in Levan first of all we could say model 1 because we create a new object that contains the information about the model and then we need to put it in quotation marks single quotation marks and your task was to write out that uh, model that we want to create so we could for example say helping the helping latent variable is do you remember how to oops, how to say whether how it is defined by exactly it's equals and tilt and then we have to write out all our variables here that are loading or supposed to be loading on our helping latent variable six and help seven we have two dimensions so we want to create now the second latent variable so let's call it voice again equals and tilt and then we write out voice one plus voice two plus voice three voice four plus voice five great so we got that so if we now go back we could highlight the whole lot or we could just um, go at the starting line and then control enter it will run it so if you want to check what is actually there if we run model one and run this it basically just shows us that we have this kind of model loaded into Levan we don't actually need that so let's get rid of it so we created our model so now we want to test this model against our data so this is basically the bread and butter of CFI so running the CFI with the total data set the way we want to do this is we want to again create an object which contains the output so let's say we fit model 1 and 
the command that we need to use now from the Lavan package is called CFA. There are some some people are so imaginative, aren't they? And then the model that we want to test is model one. We also need to s specify what data we want to use. The data set that we're using right now is data example, right? And we could ask for standardized results. We could standardize by the latent variable. If we run now this, nothing happened. Oh my god. Well, because we created an object which now contains all the information that we want. One of the best options to actually visualize that is again to go with summary and then we go fit model one and we can ask for a couple of additional bits and pieces of information. So we want to have fit measures, right? We want to get information on how well our data fits. We also want to get the standardized uh, information. So standardized equals true. And another piece of information that can be quite relevant is the R-square. So how much variance is actually explained in each item by the latent variable. So if we now click here, it gives us all the output. Remember, this is the total data set. So we combined all the data from New Zealand, from the Philippines, from Canada and from Brazil. So now let's go together through the output. So the first thing is it tells us that it took 19 iterations. Uh, the estimator that was used was maximum likelihood. Um, there was a specific optimization method and we essentially estimated 25 different parameters. So that's the factor loadings and error variances and uh, latent variances etc etc. We have altogether 3,325 observations. And the first bit of information that is really useful for us it is the chi-square test. So model test, user model, that is the chi-square that we want to use. Uh, degrees of freedom are, we have 53 degrees of freedom. So if you remember the problem with just identified models, we don't have that problem. On the other hand though, our chi-square is highly significant. As you can imagine with 3,000 over than, over than, over than 3,000 observations, even small deviations from the implied data matrix, um, even smallest kind of niggly little deviations can become statistically significant in such a large data set. Yeah, so that is one of the problems. Then we have a model test baseline model. Basically we can ignore that for the time being. And we have a number of different fit indices. So here we have the comparative or incremental fit indices. So we have the CFI and the TLI. If you remember what is a good cut off value for comparative fit indices. Do you remember? Yeah, should be 0.95 or higher. So for CFI, we're pretty good. For TLI, we're just on the border. There are some other log likelihood fit indices and the AIC, BIC. We will ignore them for the time being. The next bit of information that is relevant for us is the RMSEA. So it's a lack of fit index. And here smaller values are better. So the value here, it is slightly below 0.08. So it is not amazing, nothing to write home about, but it's not too bad either. As I mentioned previously, the RMSEA is actually one of the few where we have confidence intervals and we also have a significant um, significance test. I think we might 
discuss that a little bit later. And then importantly, we also have the SRMR and it is quite a low value. So if we look at the performance of all three together, pretty good, pretty good for a CFI TLI. Not so happy with the RMSEA, quite happy with the SRMR. So everything considered, overall our model seems to be working considerably well in the in the total data set. The next bit in our output is are all the parameter estimates. So here we have the parameter estimates for the latent variables, essentially the factor loadings. So here's our unstandardized uh, factor loading, the standard error, whether the factor loading is significant or not based on, on the Z value and, and the significance value. And then if we were to standardize the latent variable or standardize all values, so here we have a value that is the uh, factor loading standardized across all parameters and so now it varies between minus one and plus one and as you can see some items load better and some items load a little bit worse but all of them load significantly so that is good yeah so our helping items seem to be good indicators of the help in latent variable. The same with voice. So here we have the uh, unstandardized factor loadings, the standard error, the Z value, the significance value, and then we have what the parameters would be like if we standardize the latent variable only or all parameters. The covariances are the covariances between the latent variables. So it's highly significant, so 0 0.77 is the, um, is the standardized, because we asked for standardized uh, values when we fitted our model. So this is basically the correlation. So helping and voice correlate 0 0.77 in our data set overall. Here we have next the variances for each item and the variances for the latent variables. We standardized the latent variables, so no worries about that. And the last bit of information here is the R squares. So how much variance is explained in each item by the latent factor? And as you can see, it's actually pretty good, pretty decent. So most items, more than 50% of the variance is ex actually explained by the latent variable. Uh, some exceptions are the first two helping items and but that is it i think i might have to close this session just now and get a cable to charge my laptop i'll be right back so save your data right i will save it right now as cfa dot r and i'll be right back